According to the book, Biden exploded as Afghanistan crumbled while he was on vacation, saying, give me a break. According to a new book, when President Biden learned that the Afghan president had left Kabul before the Taliban took control of the capital in 2021, he reacted angrily. Biden left D.C. on Friday, August 12, 2021, for what was supposed to be a mid-August vacation to Camp David. Three days later, he received word from National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan that Ashraf Ghani, the country's president at the time, had escaped as the Taliban prepared to march into the capital. According to the upcoming book The Last Politician by journalist Franklin Four, which explores the inner workings at the White House during the disastrous pullout from Afghanistan in 2021, Biden exploded in frustration when he got the news and yelled, give me a break. Gold Star Family Slam Biden Admin Over Chaotic Afghanistan Withdrawal As Millie Vows Accountability Biden wasn't the only one on vacation when Ghani escaped and it became clear to the world that the American withdrawal from Afghanistan would be far more chaotic than the administration expected. The Biden White House had expected a gradual handover of responsibility to the Afghan government until August 31, 2021, when the Taliban would begin to take an active role in governing the country. Instead, the Taliban rapidly took over territories as the U.S. moved out of various bases and were marching on Afghanistan before Ghani fled, fearing for his life. Read on the Fox News app. However, in the first weeks of August 2021, multiple high-ranking White House officials left for vacation. Biden went to Camp David. Secretary of State Antony Blinken was in the Hamptons. And then White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki took her family to the beach. McCall demands more interviews with Biden officials on chaotic and deadly Afghanistan withdrawal. On August 16, 2021, the day after Ghani fled Kabul, a USC-17 military transport aircraft filled with evacuees took off from then Hamid Karzai International Airport, but some people on the crowded runway grabbed onto the landing gear in a desperate attempt to escape as the plane took off. Biden marks second anniversary of botched Afghan withdrawal, touts it as one of the largest airlifts in history. Upon seeing the images of Afghans falling from the sky, which became some of the most dramatic scenes of the evacuation, Saki knew she had to leave her family vacation, for wrote, according to Four, Saki wrote to then White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain, I'm contemplating coming back, and Klain responded, I'm sorry. I think you need to. Four's book notes that Biden took an active interest in the evacuation, throwing out ideas to get more people on planes and out of the country and asking to be updated when individual people had made it safely out of the Afghanistan. The Biden administration evacuated more than 120,000 people from Afghanistan as the country collapsed under Taliban pressure. However, that improvised feat of logistics failed to overcome the impression that the Biden administration was reacting slowly, for wrote. The White House was stung by the fact that the toughest criticism was not just coming conservative media but also from the columnists and venerable reporters that Biden's inner circle respected and tended to heed, for his book states. For writes that, I, and the thick of the crisis, Biden didn't have time to voraciously consume the news, but he was well aware of the tough coverage. We're getting killed, he would admit. It frustrated him to no end. However, the criticism did nothing to change Biden's mind about leaving Afghanistan nor change his detestation for the conventional wisdom of the foreign policy elites, for said. After defying their delusional predictions of progress for so long, Biden wasn't going to back down now. In fact, everything he'd witnessed from his seat in the Situation Room confirmed his belief that exiting a war without hope was the best and only course, for rights. Four's book recounts the first two years of Biden's presidency from his inauguration through the 2022 midterm elections. The book is to be released Tuesday by Penguin Random House.